Dwayne Warren, and today we're with at-large council person Adrian Wooten. You've been a council person since 2016. Um, tell me about that experience and what led you into politics. Yes, that's correct. Um, growing up in a household where I saw my parents be public servants, it was easy for me myself to become a public servant. My father was a Korean War POW veteran, wow. and he um, gave to his country as well as to the city of Greensboro. Wow. We, we applaud you for that. Um, you like to always remind us that you're not originally from New Jersey. Um, this is your adopted home, but you're a native North Carolinian. Yes, yes. Native North Carolinian, HBCU. I attended University of North Carolina A&T. Greensboro is a city where it was broadcasted to have one of the first sit-ins during the civil rights movement. Outstanding. You come here to New Jersey, particularly to Orange, and um, you get involved in the community first. Um, tell us about some of those engagements where you thought it was important to get involved in the community. I started teaching at Oakwood Avenue School, wanted to live where I taught. We moved right down the block from Oakwood Avenue School, and the rest is history. Nice. Um, you went to North Carolina A&T. You came here, you began to teach, and you continued some of your teaching right at Kane College, mm -hmm. uh, one of our early teaching schools. <clears throat> Tell me about your leadership style and uh, how you've been so effective in getting things done for your uh, constituents. Okay, so um, prior to becoming a teacher, I worked for a major corporation where I was trained and taught. Um, they enhanced um, the leadership styles of the different managers. So I am kind of laid back. I go into a place. I observe what's going on. I take into accountability the talents of whoever I'm going to be working with. And then you move on from there. Nice. One of the early issues that um, you worked on as a council person was voting and um, most recently with the census. Why is that so important? It's important that our voices be heard. It's important that we are documented somewhere in some national um, library somewhere. And people tend to give money to people who are recognized. So the census is important. Say, for example, we have 50,000 people, 50,000 people show up on the census. Whenever we are given money from the government, that money will reflect the people who um, answer to the census. Absolutely, very, very important to be counted. As a council person, statutorily, one of your jobs is to uh, produce legislation, among other things, and you've been prolific at generating legislation. Tell me about some of your um, more major pieces of legislation. So one major piece um, that I, I co-sponsored with another council person was a Norris ordinance. We had something on the books. It was not so much in line with the state. So what we did was we researched the state ordinance and we brought Orange up to code with the state. You've worked on and produced a number of legislative items that deal with quality of life. Why are those so important? And can you name some of those? They are important because your home should be your castle. It should be your place of peace. And driving throughout the city of Orange Township, um, you want it to be peaceful. For example, I introduced a barbed wire ordinance to get rid of all barbed wire. As you drive through various wards, you see it. Barbed wire is indicative of... Uh, keeping someone in or keeping someone out it is something that you see when you drive up to a correctional facility. It's not something that you should see when you go out, have a cookout or barbecue in your backyard with your family. Yeah. We have a citizenry that's informed, that's enlightened, and we don't need those kinds of measures. I, I understand that. You've also dealt with a parking issue um, as we continue to have development and um, property values increase in the town. Parking becomes an issue. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you've done in working with that issue. So I met with a group of residents who are concerned about parking as well. They wanted to institute a parking placard, and this was to place in your car 
Um, so whenever the officer arrived on the block, he would see the placard versus being told that certain streets have people parking on them overnight and possibly getting a ticket. And then that starts the snowball effect. So it's a convenience for the residents who live there. Mm -hmm. They know they're identified fully. They don't have to wake up with a parking ticket on their car. I'm sure yeah. that's a, a relief to them. It's for visitors. For so tell me about that portion. Now, you've worked on parking permits where residents who have a parking permit are permitted to park on the street as well. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but then those residents who have visitors sometimes find themselves with tickets, and that's what a pl parking placard issue comes okay. it, it sure did. And this was to allow, whenever you had a visitor come to your home, you can um, go to the police department, pick up a, pla a placard, place it in your car. You can only use it for up to four days because we don't want people parking for 24 days. Um, it would be good for the police department because they'll see that placard and just keep driving. It's good for the resident who's not embarrassed that their mom or their grandma got a ticket. And it's good for the person that may or may not be from out of town. They don't have to deal with our court system and come back to Orange. Outstanding. You've also dealt with the issue on trying to keep sanitary conditions um, under wraps and trying to keep our town beautiful with the garbage can order. Mm -hmm. Garbage can ordinance is very important. It is, I met with the administration several times and several uh, key stakeholders in the city regarding garbage cans and dumpsters. We have an ordinance on the books now where it states that you are to put your garbage can out. It must have a lid or you can put your garbage out in a certain uh, weighted garbage bag. So we are dealing with that right now. That's an ongoing thing with the administration, with the law department and some key stakeholders. I know you came up in the hospitality industry and in corporate America, and then you branched off and uh, studied paralegal studies, and now you work as a paralegal now. Tell me about how that training intersects with your duties as a legislator. So I have to laugh with that because I am seen as a council person who reads the code as a bedtime story. Mm -hmm. And I do. I know the code is what we're bound by. And the it's, code is the Orange Municipal Code where the local laws are held. For it the is. City. It is. And um, we have to do things according to what's right. It's not based on how we feel. It's not based on what we like. It's based on the law. But what's wonderful for me as a legislator, I am allowed to enhance the code to make it better for current day citizens. For example, there is a piece of code which was in our ABC code um, that has some derogatory language. That's the alcohol beverage control section of the city code. Yes. That's when you were working. I think this got some um, statewide and national attention. Um, we were working to try to rid the code of language that might be offensive to certain populations. Right, right. So um, along with you, Mayor Warren, who um, is always progressively thinking, you always allow us to do what we need to to do within the law and you always support us um, we were able to meet with various organizations various people to kind of go through the code and review and see whatever we can find and take it out tell me the, about the interplay um, with our local government and state government in terms of the issue of foreclosures how how is it uh, beneficial that we have a relationship with um, the governor and the lieutenant governor and the department of community affairs with respect to the foreclosure issue that affects so many here in orange um being a paralegal and sitting in an office where i am constantly every tuesday morning looking to see who's on the sheriff's sale list and the sheriff's sale list in essex county as you know um, is a list of people who've gone through the foreclosure process right. and the sheriff is going to take their homes. Right. Um, it's important when you are able to see that in the city of Orange Township, this does happen. So you have to be able to have a, a conversation with the assemblywoman, with the governor regarding these things and with the mayor as well um, to speak for these people who may or may not necessarily have a voice about foreclosures and sheriff sales. On the federal level, the same thing. There's another interplay that, that you talked about um, with our uh, senators and uh, Congress people. Um, tell me about some of the uh, things that that relationship has impacted here on the local level with respect to um, the urban enterprise zone, opportunity zones, and, and other kinds of funding for our roads. I think in Orange, I think we may be, in Essex County, the city that has more opportunity zones than anyone has. Per capita. Per capita. So that's great for us because it allows money to come into the city of Orange Township, which allows 
us to pave our roads and take care of our infrastructure. Excellent. You are big on education. You've done a lot of youth initiatives. Um, tell me about the state of our relationship with our schools and our school board members. The relationship with the school and school board members for me is is a really good relationship. Um, it's not unnormal for the superintendent to give me a call about certain issues within the school board. Um, we've met with the administration and the school board about certain key things. Being a teacher, and even though I don't teach now, I always want to be able to encourage and support the students of the city of Orange Township. Education was key in my household. My father didn't play. I think we were the only one on the block who didn't have calculators because we couldn't get one until we learned all our multiplication yes, tables. Yeah, so yeah, yes. education is key. Um, I, I can't leave you without asking you about your many efforts through COVID. Um, and just tell us some of the things that you did on the front lines to help um, maintain our society, really, but certainly uh, our city in Orange. First, I want to applaud you, Mayor Warren, for, for being on the forefront of COVID. You called in all of your department heads and you had a mass roundtable discussion about COVID and what each and every one of us were going to do. So I really want to applaud you for that to have the foresight to see that there's something that may or may not go away soon. Um, as far as our effort, efforts or my efforts, you know, going into senior buildings, making sure that they had water, making sure that you call the seniors because they were lonely, they couldn't be visited by their family members, um, just checking up on people, uh, checking up on the building managers, making sure that they were all right, working with the health department to make sure that the buildings were being clean in a timely matter, manner, but that was all led by you and your foresight to bring us together as a town. Well, we thank you for, for your involvement and support in that effort. Um, I remember after uh, a whole round of just going door to door in communities throughout the city, um, it made you remember that you need to go home and check on your mom. Um, I, I did. <laughs> I did, which was a scary thing. Um, had to go home and just to make sure that she was all right. But, you know, it was kind of scary. You just, you know, I couldn't actually hug her. Right. But just to go home and put eyes on her was wonderful. Excellent. Um, tell me about what you want to see, um, any improvements in the council and um, some of the agenda items that you'd like to see moving forward. So as far as the council, I would like us to become a more progressive council. Um, as far as the meetings, I would like for, it's kind of hard for the citizens to follow the meetings. So if we are speaking to a certain resolution or ordinance, it would be nice if that ordinance or that resolution could flash up on the screen. So if um, a person at home has an agenda, they can look down and say, oh, they're here. Okay. Um, sometimes it's hard for people to follow on the motion, what's going on on the motion. So I think we need to let them know, like, on the motion, everything stops and we're just dealing with that one particular thing. When we speak about codified, when we use words like that, I think we need to let our constituents know exactly what codified is. Um, more importantly, we need to really explain to them when it comes to ordinance what a first reading is, what a second reading is what's going to happen between the first and the second reading, what a public hearing is, and then how soon does that law go into effect? That leads me to, to my last question um, about your initiative on civics in government, where you teach this entire process, or at least make it available to our citizenry um, on how government works here on the local level and things they need to pay attention to and how they can get involved. How important is that? Is Absolutely important. Absolutely important. Um, we've had several conversations with our assembly people, some people in the state houses where we want to have a civics day in the city of Orange Township. And it not only will be for our children, it will be for everyone to come and Excellent. be included. Excellent. And everyone will be in introduced to their city council members and their assembly people and their state people. Um, it's highly important for you to come out and vote. So a couple of weeks ago, we had 
something that just outrages me whenever I think about it, um, a reversal on a key piece of legislation um, that allowed women to be in control of their own bodies. Roe v. Wade was overturned um, in the case, um, and I wrote about this, um, one of our more conservative justices is now looking to use this case that overturned Roe v. Wade to actually go after some fundamental rights mm -hmm. in our Constitution. You've been uh, active in speaking out against that. Tell me, how do constituents get in touch with Councilwoman Adrienne Wooten? It's very easy. That's my number on the screen. That's my email address on the screen. You can text me, call me anytime, day or night. I was one of the first council people to have an answering service that answers my calls 24 hours a day, all holidays. Um, and I'm just always out in the committee. I'm, I'm always out in the community and I'm very approachable. I eat in Orange. I'm always on Main Street <laughs> eating. I shop in Orange. Yes. Um, I, I live in Orange. And if... I know you have an updated list of um, notices that you send out. If they want to get on the notice list, how do we do that? If you want to get on the notice list, you can call that telephone number that you see there appearing on the screen, as well as send that number a text um, with your email address or email addresses, whichever you prefer. I do have an account where I occasionally send out notices to the public. Excellent. There we have it. Councilwoman at large, Adrian Wooten, sitting down um, with us just to let us know a little bit more about government. Uh, but the key is getting contact information so that you can access her, access her programs, and keep yourself informed. I'm Mayor Warren, and this is an introduction to the city of Orange Township.